Is there anything in the world that should be a higher priority than one's own family? Listen to the story of one man who puts his own convenience and feelings first, and ended up in a pitiful way. My name is Leah. I'm a 35-year-old housewife, busy every day working part-time, doing housework, and raising a child. My husband Joshua is an ordinary office worker, and we have our four-year-old daughter Zoe. She is our princess. My daughter is growing up well, and I feel like we have perfect life together. Our marriage is relatively happy, and I have no complaints about my husband. I thought that our days would continue to be peaceful, but my daily life was disrupted by a certain event. What? Your sister is pregnant? The news took me by surprise, because my sister-in-law had always said that she would be single for the rest of her life, and that she would be devoted to her work. She was what you would call a carrier woman. And I secretly respected her for that. Congratulations! What's he like? Is there going to be a wedding soon? When I asked my husband, he looked at me like he was uncomfortable to answer. My sister's partner has a wife and kids. What? That's. Well, my sister was more passionate about it. She knew he has married for a long time. And continued the relationship anyway. Then she found out she was pregnant, and he ran away and disappeared. So she decided to have the baby alone. Oh, is that so? It's a lot to deal with, huh? To be honest, as a married woman, I was a bit uncomfortable that she would have a relationship with someone she knew to be married. But I decided to be happy for her pregnancy. So it seems that she's going to go back to her parents' house to raise her child. Even though my parents are still there, it must be a lot of work. I'm thinking of checking in on her until things settle down, you know. I understand his concerns for his unmarried sister who is going to have a baby. That's why I accepted my husband's proposal. Okay, let me know if there's anything I can do. Thanks, I appreciate it. You take care of Zoe for me, please. I guess my parents and I would be enough to deal with the situation. I was a little touched that my husband is a really kind person. I knew he was a good father. That's what I thought at the time. Time passed, and my sister-in-law gave birth to a healthy baby boy. His name was Aaron. I thought it'd be inconvenient for them that we visit right after the birth. So I decided to see the baby after things had settled down. But then I started to notice something strange in my husband. Hey, mom, isn't dad coming home today? Sorry, honey, he's busy right now. Let's be patient a little longer. I wish I could talk to daddy. Zoe's words made my heart ache. My husband hasn't come home for days now. Since my sister-in-law gave birth, my husband only comes home about two days a week. The rest of the days, he spends at his parents' house. I accepted my husband's proposal, but I never imagined it would go this far. Hey, Joshua, I think this is a little too weird. You should come home a little more often. Zoe misses you. I called my husband and told him right away, but he said. What are you talking about? She has a baby now, and it's the hardest time of her life. My husband got upset, saying I was selfish and handed the phone to his parents. Hello, Leah. I'm sorry, but we just had a newborn baby. If you have a child too, you would understand that, right? It's true. You know our daughter has no husband. Why don't you show a little compassion? Neither my parents-in-law nor my husband seem to think this situation is unusual. That a father comes home only two days a week. After that, I patiently continued to ask my husband for help. Then he said, 
Leah, I didn't know you were such a cold person. All right, I'll come home. And see, and he started coming home except on weekdays, but clearly he wasn't happy. I was angry at his attitude, but my daughter was so happy to see her daddy back that I swallowed my anger. Then one day, hey, where the hell are you? I called my husband in a harsh tone. Where am I? Of course, I'm at my parents. What? It's Zoe's birthday today. I told you yesterday. Why don't you come home? What? Today is the day we are having dinner at my parents' house, you know. Besides, I have to bathe Aaron later. Huh? Whose father are you? By the time I raised my voice, the phone was already off the hook. My husband didn't come home that day after all. I wonder, Daddy doesn't like me. I wish we could have had birthday cake together. Zoe murmured with a dejected look on her face. Daddy's busy at work today, so let's eat cake with mommy today, okay? I almost cried myself as I watched my daughter's sad face as she puts the cake in her mouth, fighting back tears. Whose father are you? What is with you and your sister? Well, it's. What? Is there something? No, it's not like that. It's just she's going through a lot, so I have to be there for her. But your mom and dad are at home. Why do you need to be there too? When I asked him about it, he just looked at me like I was the bad guy. I remember when my husband and I decided to get married. My sister-in-law said this to me. I thought my brother loved me the most. But I'm glad he finally found the right person. At the time, I just thought my sister-in-law was a wonderful, independent carrier woman, and thought they care for each other deeply as a brother and a sister. But isn't that all? My suspicion grew. Some time passed, and Aaron turned one year old. We decided to have a birthday party at my parents' in-laws' house. To be honest, I didn't want to go. Is Aaron getting bigger? I want to play with him. My daughter said so innocently, and it's her cousin's birthday, so I decided to take her to the party. Let's celebrate Aaron's birthday with the whole family. My husband said. He weren't there for Zoe's birthday. I remembered how she was sad that day. But said nothing. On the day of the party, we dressed Zoe in her favorite dress and left for my in-laws' house. My husband had gone back to his parents' in-laws' house the day before, so it was just me and Zoe. After a year of this lifestyle, it had become the norm. My husband is away on a lot of business trips, and it feels like that. When we arrived at my parents' in-laws' house, there was a lot of food decorations and presents for Aaron. Were all lined up. Happy birthday, Aaron! Zoe showed Aaron the presents and handed them to his mother, the sister-in-law. Wow, Aaron! I'm so happy for you. Without a word of thanks, the sister-in-law walked right past Zoe. I got the impression that she is become a bit of a bad person. She didn't used to be like this. My daughter seemed a little hurt by her attitude, and I had a sore look on her face. At this point, I was in the mood to go home. Then my husband, who was already drunk, called my daughter and said, "Zoe, come here." Zoe felt happy to be called by her father and ran to him, smiling. Zoe is going to be Aaron's wife in the future, okay? He said. What the? I was about to say something, but my daughter replied. No, I am going to marry William. William? Who's that? William? He's my friend from preschool. 
He's smart and cool. I like William. Zoe said this and tried to tell him what happened at the preschool. Then my husband suddenly. No, you were going to marry Aaron. Don't think about anything else. He yelled at her like a crazy person. I couldn't help but storm over to my husband. Hey, what are you saying? Zoe is scared. You, Leah, you should at least discipline your daughter. She can't have a boyfriend. I can't believe you'd say such a thing to your own daughter. Moreover, my sister-in-law said, "I'm looking forward to the wedding. Don't let Zoe go out with anyone." Leah understood. She wasn't joking. She looked serious. It was even creepier that my parents-in-law were laughing, as if they agreed with my sister-in-law. I can't take it anymore. I don't want to be in this place one more second. I couldn't help but raise my voice. Don't be ridiculous. Zoe is a person, not a puppet. I took my daughter by the hand and left my parents in those house. She's never had a grown man yell at her like that before, and she was sobbing her eyes out. That's not daddy. That's not daddy. That's not daddy, right, mommy? I hugged her tight and made up my mind. I don't need him. He's a lousy husband and father. I took immediate action to protect my daughter. I decided that she and I would stay with my parents for a while. Finally, about two weeks after we separated, I received a call from my husband. Hey, where are you? I don't have to answer that question. What do you want? I can't believe he found out we'd move out after two weeks. I guess that means he didn't come home at all. After all, he doesn't care about me or our daughter. What's wrong with you? How's Zoe? My husband asked impatiently. I don't have to answer that question either. Bye. With that, I hang up the phone. I wanted to avoid any contact between Zoe and my husband for a while, so I didn't tell him where we were. But then. He started contacting me every day. Come on, Leah, tell me where you are. I need to see Zoe. We are family. Being separate from each other is not right. And when I wouldn't tell him where we were, he finally exploded in anger. Don't turn Zoe around for your reasons. Who are you to tell me what to do? He was so selfish that I got angry and yelled at him over the phone. If you were going to talk like that, you might as well come here. I'll give you the facts. When I told my husband that I was staying at my parents' house, he visited me right away that weekend. When Zoe saw my husband, she quickly hid behind me. He was shocked by her reaction. Zoe, hey, it's Daddy. What's wrong? I don't like you. You scare me. I want Mommy, Mommy only. She grabbed my clothes and wouldn't let go. Deciding it was too dangerous to continue, I took my husband aside. Zoe, why? He's holding his head in his hands. You see. It's not me who's rejecting you. It's Zoe. Of course she rejects you. After you yelled at her like that, no wonder she hates you. A father who never comes home and puts his nephew before her. But I did it for my sister's sake. Who's a father or you? What is your sister to you? My husband is silent. I asked my parents to take care of my daughter for now, and decided to go to nearby coffee shop to talk with my husband about the future. As soon as I got to the table, I presented the divorce papers to my husband. 
He looked at me with a stunned expression on his face. Please, divorce me. I want to get away from you, and so does Zoe. I only wanted to do it for my sister. I thought you and Zoe would understand. I don't understand what he's saying anymore. Why do we have to go along with your selfishness? I came down hard on my husband, demanding to know what he had been doing and saying. I could have laughed it off if you had joked about Zoe becoming Aaron's wife. But you yelled at her and never apologized. Do you have any idea how much it hurt Zoe? And how much she cried? You are always talking about yourself. I ask you again, what does your sister mean to you? She doesn't seem like just a sister to me. Then, my husband began to whisper the truth. My husband and his sister were really close. They traveled together to hot springs and overseas, sent each other presents to each other's birthdays, and they all would share the room together at home. When my sister-in-law found out that my husband and I were getting married, she told me that she thought my brother loved her the most. I knew it was to be expected, but they were siblings with an unusual and extraordinary emotional connection. I don't have a relationship with her, you know, but I love her. I love her as a person and I love her as a sister. So when I found out that she was going to have a baby without being married, I wanted to help her. Having Aaron and Zoe get married was my husband and sister-in-law's idea. If we can be together, then let our children get married. How horrifying! The reason behind the husband neglecting his wife and daughter. I see the whole picture now. Do you think I'm going to let you get away with it? I will never forgive you for your cruelty to Zoe. And how dare you can say family should be together. My husband kept his head down and said in a quiet voice, My sister is moving out soon. She's getting married. Huh? So you were just going to get lonely and try to make us a family again? That's not going to happen. My husband's immediate response was to hang on to me. Please, I'll be a good father from now on. I'll be a good husband. Please, Leah. He bowed his head. Give me a break. I don't trust you anymore. Zoe feels the same way. We don't trust your parents and your sister too. It's completely insane that people can smile so openly about what happened at the birthday party. Since then, Zoe has never been able to speak well to any adults outside of me and my parents. She just wanted to celebrate her cousin's birthday. You destroyed her innocent soul. I won't let you do it anymore, and I will never forgive you. I want a divorce. I'll get custody. I can't leave my daughter with you. What do you say? I've just completely cut off my husband's lifeline. Goodbye. I said coldly. I will do everything I can for my daughter. Always have and always will. I became a mother with the determination. After that, my husband and I divorced. I got custody of my daughter and he's paying me monthly child support. After the divorce, he moved back in with his parents. I guess the separation from his daughter was very hard on him because he started missing a lot of work and eventually resigned. He is now unemployed and reckless. I know this because his parents are kind of enough to tell me what's going on with him. Please give him a chance. He's Zoe's father after all. I'm not going back together with him. If I did, there's no point of getting a divorce. He had it all coming. It's not right for him to come crying to me now. 
There must be another reason why my husband is in such a miserable state, and it's just not the divorce. My sister-in-law, with whom he has an unusual relationship, has moved out. By the way, my sister-in-law is married to the father of Aaron, the man she had an unfaithful relationship. He divorced his wife and remarried my sister-in-law, and were forced to pay his ex-wife a considerable amount of alimony. His sister is also in a difficult situation financially. Well, if she wanted to marry him, even if she had to pay the price, I guess that's fine. But I hear that their marriage is quickly deteriorating due to their financial difficulties. Money's tight, and the typical ending is near. As for me, I quit my part-time job after the divorce and got a full-time job. I'm raising my daughter with the help of my parents. Just knowing that my daughter is happy and enjoying her life makes me, her mother, happy. I'm glad I had her, and I'm grateful to my ex-husband for giving me this child. On my birthday, Zoe baked a cake with my mother and wrote me a letter. Thank you for everything, Mom. You make me so proud of you. I love you. My daughter hugs me. Thank you. I love you too, Zoe. I would do anything for her. I would overcome anything. A mother cannot rest to protect her daughter's smile.